Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Laura Stranks and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Um, glad you could join me today. If you enjoy what I create today, I'd love you to either subscribe or give me the thumbs up down in the box below. Um, just a couple of things before I start today's card. Um, if you want to see any of my creations that I've done over the past six years or so as being a demonstrator, you can go on to Cards by Laura. All my um, creations are on there. They are for sale here if you live here in Australia. Um, but there are lots of ideas there and I'm happy for anyone to case whatever's on the, the page or message me if you want instructions for any of the cards that are there. Also, I have another group, uh, Laura's Craft Room Tips and Tutorials. This is where I upload my videos that I do, all my YouTube videos. I've only just started uh, a month or so ago, so um, this is all new to me. But on there also, in the files section, there will be all the PDFs for uh, and instructions for the cards that I create on my YouTube videos. So if you need um, measurements and instructions of how to put them all together, just go on to Laura's Craft. It's, it's a private group, but if you tick the join button on there, um, you will easily come in and join the group. Um, it's free to anyone to join. Um, I monitor it uh, regularly, so it's um, quite a nice group to be in. That's all for my intro little bit. Now we'll get on to today's card. And I hope you like what I'm going to do. I do have a sample here of the one I did a while ago. This is in the old retired paper. I think it was called Daffodil Afternoon, um, the DSP. And this is it. I have cased this from another demonstrator. Um, and I can't recall who it was at the moment. But um, most of my layouts are from cased from other people's. Sometimes I create my own. But I do put a different spin on some of the cards that I create. So this one here is called um, the Cube Building Block Card. So as you can see, that these just look like building blocks. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. This one I've done with DSP. You can, um, I'll show you when you get to it, you can create a... a full panel here, stamp it all with um, whatever stamp you choose and then um, put it together, cut it and put it together on these um, little cubes. Your front panel matches up with the inside panel so it looks as though it's mirror imaged. Um, this one I didn't decorate too much, I've put a couple of little embellishments on the front and your writing panel on the front, uh, on the back sorry. These are fussy cut, um, I love fussy cutting so it's nothing for me to do a bit of fussy cutting and I've done some on for today's card as well. So I'll just put that aside. We'll leave it up the top there. I don't know if you can still see it up there. Probably not, but we'll get started. Now I've chosen the new Wonderful World um, DSP for this one. Uh, it comes with a stamp set. It's a free celebration item here in Australia um, for $180 spend. Um, and you get the stamp set and the DSP for uh, if you spend as up to $180 either out of the mini catalog or um, out of the annual catalog. So that's that one. And I'll get on to the measurements and size. I have done a template which I'll show you because the card base that I've chosen is uh, Rich Razzleberry which is a little bit hard to see. So I'll, um, I'll go through the measurements with you. Um, the base is 6 inches by 10 and a half inches. And on the long side, which I've already scored, um, we score at 3 and a half and 7 inches. And I'm not sure if you can see the score lines there. You might be able to. I'll show you on this. This is my template one, which you'll be able to see. So it's... Ten and a half this way, six inches, and I've scored down here at three and a half. Um, this is going from this edge across here to seven inches, so that's your score marks. Then I'll go through these with you um, 
without this base because you can't see it but I've still got a mark on my base piece um, so you can get the cubes in the right spot um, we're going to mark and I'll just get my ruler we're going to mark from this second score line the seven inch score line where it's scored you're going to put your ruler across and put a, a, a little pencil line here and here at two inches um, ignore that one eighth of an inch just yet um, so we need a pencil line all the way through at two inches and then go across to four inches on this side so they're two two inches either side of this second score line and put a line down through there then if you turn it this way this you mark down one eighth of an inch here at the top there and also at the bottom on this pencil line here the two inch pencil line so that goes another one and eight, one eighth of an inch up from there and the same over this side you've got one eighth of an inch there and one eighth of an inch down there that's that piece then you're going to go from that one eighth of an inch and I'll go this way this time it will be easier so from that one eighth of an inch we're going to go and I'll just get my measurements out so I can I've written them on here but they might not have been oh, I'll read them from here it's easier um, the first these are just pencil marks as a guide for you where you put your cubes so they're evenly spaced apart as you can see these are evenly spaced apart well some of them aren't quite but they sh should be um, the beauties of life uh, we're going down from the one eighth so put your ruler at the one eighth inch mark down from the top then your first score mark will be at one and a quarter and then one and a half then you're going down to two and three quarters and then three inches. These are just tiny little pencil marks or a little dot so you know where you're going to put your cubes. Um, down to four and a quarter and then four and a half and then the last one will be at five and three quarters and that should end up on that little one eighth inch mark at the bottom. So they're one eighth from the top and bottom and all of these, they're half an inch apart um sorry quarter of an inch apart between the cubes the three here so you've got one two three four cubes and then you'll do exactly the same on the other side um down one eighth of an inch there up one eighth which you should have already done then you down to one and a quarter one and a half two and three quarters three four and a quarter and four and a half and then the last one should end up on that one eighth inch mark, which is five and three quarters. This is the only um, intricate part of the card that you need to worry about. So what I'm going to do is mark it on here. I haven't marked this one yet. I've done, I've done the two pencil lines down, which are hard for you to see, but and I've done the one eighth inch marks at the top. So I'm just going to go down here, start that at the one eighth inch mark. This is where you always think, why did I choose a dark colour for the background? And we're going to go one and a quarter, which is there, one and a half there, and then two and three quarters, which is here, and then three inches, which is here, uh, four and one quarter, four and a half, and the last one should end up, which is five and three quarters. I haven't got that quite even there. I might just rub those out and do those a couple again because I'm not quite on that. And it won't line up with the other side. I'll put my ruler back at the one. Eight. You've got to start on this one eighth inch mark at the top. Uh, one and a quarter. One and a half. Two and three quarters three, four and a quarter, and four and a half, I can see what from the previous one there where I was out, and then the last one's on five and three quarters, which is correct, and then the same over this side, we can go from either way, it doesn't really matter, so long as you've put your ruler on the one eighth inch mark at the top, I hope you can see what I'm doing here, um, that's why I showed you on the vanilla piece. It was much easier to see. So we've got 
one and a quarter, I should know these off by heart now, one and a quarter, one and a half, two and three quarters, three, four and a quarter, four and a half, and then the last one's on five and three quarters, which is correct. So that's your markings for when you come to put your panels on, but we'll get to that after. If you could do that, if you do that first, it makes it a lot easier. I'll leave that one up there. Now I'll just show you the other pieces that I've got here. Um, my inside DSP panels, which I've cut, I've fussy cut a few flowers. These are going to go um, either side of this piece which is going to go and this this line here you can rub out because the cubes only come over here so these will go either side of this don't worry that they're covering the pencil lines these will go on after you've put your cubes on they are there's two of these one and seven eighths by five and three quarters all these measurements will be in the pdf and i fussy cut these few flowers which i'm going to put on after as some decoration just take the plainness off and then we'll put those aside. Um, I'll go. I'll go with this block DSP piece. This is the piece we're going to cut, and I always leave it solid to like in one piece to start with. And I'll show you where to cut when we get to it. It measures two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter. You could use um, just plain cardstock here and stamp images on it if you wish. Or I cho I've chosen to do DSP. But I'll show you when we get down further with that piece. Um, this is my back writing panel. Which is this same piece back here. There's no matter. Oh, I have put a mat around it. I've changed it a little bit from that. Um, so the mat measures. It's in Melon Mambo. It's three and a quarter by five and three quarters. And then the, um, the writing panel, which is in basic white is three inches by five and a half and I've just stamped that with the image out of the stamp set and put that on the pack just to give it a little bit of um, extra then the front uh, the front mat which is this piece here and the front panel um, the Mella Mambo piece at the back is three and a quarter by five and three quarters and then i've chosen the same dsp so it'll line up with these blocks and it measures three inches by five and a half inches that's that and then my cubes which we're going to score in a minute i haven't scored them yet i've got some uh a greeting to put on the front as well i'll show you that when we get to it you need four of these for your four blocks and they measure one and a quarter by six inches and we're going to score each of them at one and a half three and four and a half so we'll go to that first and i'm just going to use my trimmer to score we'll take that off we want one and a half and you'll do all of these the same and then i'll show you i'll just get my this is all a bit loose this morning uh, one and a half make sure you've cut us out of the road I always put my cutting blade on the lower side of the scoring blade that way I can flick it down here and I'm not not tempted to grab it from here and cut instead of score um, so that's just a little hint if you ever want to do that I prefer my cutting blade out of the road altogether one and a half three inches these are all one and a half inches apart and four and a half. And we're going to do all four of those. One and a half. Three inches. And four and a half. I could have done a couple of these beforehand, but didn't think of that. We always think of things after we've started. One and a half, three, and four and a half. 
I did hear my phone ringing a minute ago, but my husband's out, so it just rang. If, if it's important, they'll ring me back. <laughs> Usually if it rings on my home phone, it's um, a junk call, so not too many people ring on our home phone unless it's someone you don't want to talk to. <laughs> so that's that scoring. So now you can fold these, and all we do is fold them in half, make sure they're nice and straight, and burnish. So I'll get my bone folder out. And these two side ones go in under as well, and burnish those. So it's just like you're going to put it around in a circle, make sure when you burnish that the edges are nice and straight. We've all um, put the um, the DSP on after, so in half, and then they're all mountain folds, which should be easy to remember. Um, I love this DSP. I ended up getting a second set, um, the stamp set and DSP, because I love the DSP. Eventually, I'll probably sell the second stamp set when it's able to be sold, but um, I've gone through quite a bit of the, the first pack of DSP. These I'm just folding from one end to the other because you know they're all um, the same fold. A little bit cool here today. I live in Brisbane and it's um the temperatures are quite cool. My mat keeps curling up here. So we're going to get our base piece again. Um, you can fold this score line at the back here, which is going to go backwards like so. I'll just score that. This front one's going to come up like this, so it's going to get folded into three. I did all the pencil lines first because it's easier when it's nice and flat to do your pencil lines. Now these are going to go like this, down this um, centre piece. Um, what have I got? Yes, that's correct. So they'll all come down the centre here, but we're going to do them in a particular order and I'll show you what to do. Um, this, if you fold it like it's... Um, just up in a in a whatever you call that uh, a square. Um, then this underside piece here, if you can see that there is going to go down that that's going to line up with that score line down there. And you're going to start making sure if you hold it out flat like this, it'll start at that one eighth inch mark here over here. And you'll line it up with this next little pencil mark. That's your guide over here. So all that will get rubbed out. It won't get covered up or anything. So it's easy to rub out later. But just make sure that this here in the centre, that um, cut line there lines up with this score line. And just pull it across like that to make sure it's not going to get caught when you close that shut. If it gets caught, you need to move it back a little bit. But make sure... You're lining it up with those little pencil lines, the one eighth inch mark, which is there and there, and that one there. So I'm going to put some glue, and we'll do this one first. We'll do all down this side first. And we're going to put some glue on the back of this. I try not to put too much glue, although someone should cover it all, but not thick, thick glue. And now we want to line it up. I, I line it up over at the pencil lines first, holding this up. Uh, as long as my head's not in the road. Make sure it's between those two pencil lines, nice and straight. And then just bring that across and lay it down to the left of the score line. Just make sure it stays nice and straight. Pull that across so you know it's going to close. And keep that nice and straight. So it's straight all the way across. That's what's good about the Tombow. You've got a little bit of wiggle room there that you can move it across. So that's the first one. 
and you're going to do them all the same make sure they're just on not on that score line but to the left of it so it holds it um, off the score line without you getting it caught and then we'll do the second one and it's going to line up with the you're going to have the quarter inch uh, the yeah the quarter inch between and it's going to line up across there now here you can line up these score lines all the way down this score line here is going to line up um, so it's easier to get started make sure you're between these two little pencil lines and if you pull it across there because these score lines are lined up this here should fall into place if you've scored correctly to start with so that one will go down there once you get the first one in, if that's correct, um, the rest should line up without um, going too crooked. This one here, we're going to line up that score line. Line up your pencil lines either side of here and with the score line up this way, if you can see what I'm doing. I always line it all up before I push this down um, and then you know it's going to be correct. So that's between the two pencil lines. Move it up a little bit. Oh, that's right. That was that wrong pencil line I had there. I was lining it up with that, but I just fixed that. So that's fine. And all these will be the same spacings apart then. Just keep going across like that to make sure it's not catching... Um, close it up so it's not catching on your when you close your card and the last one line up your score lines line up your little markings there this one I'm lining up with this bottom score line my head out of the road and that will go like so that's those I'll just give that a second to make sure they all catch and then this side is going to be the same they're going to go actually the best way we did this I found was to Put your glue on all four pieces over this side and wait on we've got to no we've got to go this way fold it out too far fold them in half like that and then put your glue down these and then close this shut and it should be exactly in the right spot that's why you do all of one side first so we're going to do all these together and cross fingers, don't try not to get glue where it shouldn't be. It's a little bit hard to see the dark cardstock. I'll go a bit slower. So if you've done the first if you've done the first lot correctly, these will just fall into place. So all of these can go down together. This is the main not difficult part of the card but um, once you get this right it will be spot on so this one here we're going to lock just close this up like so and then you know it's going to close when you finish push that down don't open it until you know it's going to catch I, I did a card the other day and I was a bit impatient and I opened it and sort of half stuck the card half didn't and then I tried to glue it again and it wouldn't glue so <laughs> I ended up it wouldn't stick at all I tried some tear and tape and that wouldn't glue either because I pulled it so much so it'll be a card for someone that or it'll be a sample card anyway so that should be right there if we go gently without pulling too much Then if you, they're not quite in line, but we can just push them gently to where they should be and then burnish 
all of these. Then we can go and rub all our pencil lines out. You'll reburnish some of these because they don't always um, sit correctly. It depends where you've scored on each and the fold and the thickness. And but that's um, that's sitting nice and flat now. Now I'm going to rub out those pencil lines before I go any further. They will be underneath um, some DSP. So it's really only the top and bottom if you want to rub out. Um, it's just those top and bottom ones that you'll see. But I'm going to rub the lot out. And that is that. That's the main part. Now... I shall do these blocks next. There's no mats. You could put mats around them, but they um, they end up uh, probably a bit too small. Now, you can see that looks a bit small, but what we're going to do, we're going to cut these. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you've got directional paper, which this is, make sure your length, um, the portrait side of your um, DSP is running up and down. So it'll measure two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Now we'll need the trimmer for this next piece. Got rubber everywhere. And we're going to cut it in half first at one and three eighths. One and three, three eighths is um, one, two, three is the one before the half. And that's in half. Now you need to keep these in order once you've cut them. So that's that side, and this is this side. And then each of the pieces you're going to, and you, I'm not going to put them together in case I get them mixed up. Um, each of these you're going to cut at one and one eighth. So that's the second line past the one. The first line is a sixteenth, the second line is an eighth. So that's one, and I'll keep these in order. One. One and one eighth, and that's the size of the top of the cubes. I'm probably a little bit out of view here. I'll just move down a fraction. That's two. If you're not worried about your, if you've got a, a non-directional pattern, um, you can just cut them, and it doesn't matter if they get mixed up. So I'm going to put these here in order. One, two, three. Four, and then this side at one and one eighth, all four, one, if you've stamped it, um, then your, your stamping will line up if you keep them in order, and it'll be just as effective, and I'll put these over here, that's top, And that's all we need our trimmer for. So these are going to go on the front of this in order. And I'll get my silicon mat and put that up a bit. And we'll do one at a time. I'll do down one side and then down the other side. And try and get them nice and straight. There'll be a, a one eighth inch border around each one. Just try and find my tweezers in here so I'm not getting glue all over my fingers. Whoops, lucky that landed up the right way. So these will go on these little cubes. Making sure you've got the nice little border all the way around. The second one. We're into our next quarter for Stampin' Up. Um, I 
got a team of about, I think it's 10 girls I've got at the moment, which is nice. Um, they all met their quarter for last quarter, so I've got my team back again. Love my little team. If you want to subscribe, um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. When I get to 50 subscribers, I'm at 40 at the moment, um, I can record live. At the moment, I'm recording and then uploading, um, scheduled to upload at a certain time on, on a Monday. All of this will go, well, you'll, when you're watching it, you'll, it'll be live, it'll be on there, but it would have been, I would have, rec I'm recording on Saturday, today is Saturday, so, um, Yes, and then I scheduled it to upload on Monday. So when I get to 50 subscribers, I can just um, record live on the day that I want to record, which will be good. Um, and if you hit the little bell, you will be notified. I think the bell won't come up until I record live. You can hit the bell and it'll notify you when I do go live. Um, I'm, at the moment, I'm going to do them. 9am on a Monday, which may not be suitable for everybody, but um, you can always go back and watch the replay later. But you'll at least get notified that um, I've done the live. This is all new to me, but it's quite exciting. I have done live videos with my group. I have done for, well, since COVID hit back in 2020. Um, I was doing lives with them, so I know how to do record and stuff. It's just YouTube is a little bit different to what I'm used to. Because when I do my lives on a Friday evening, I talk to my girls. I will message that I can see them putting comments in and I talk to them as we go. Um, this way, I could, sort of can't see. when I When I do live videos it might be a bit different but at the moment I'm just recording so you can see how it looks when you keep your pattern in order it looks much nicer it's just spread out and it's got that little border all the way around so that's that piece that's the most difficult piece the rest is just putting all these bits on and then you can see these bits will go down this side but I'm going to put this bit of decoration on first and I've played around with this a couple of times I'm not sure which way I wanted to go I think I'll put the white all on one side they only just fit in here um, I've tilted them a bit it won't matter if they overhang because there's a bit of a border down here and this these ones I'll put on this side I was going to swap them over like that but I didn't like that as much I like it this way so we'll just glue those they're all fussy cut there's no dies with this um, stamp set, so the paper, these images are not that difficult to fussy cut. Um, I know some people, when I first started, uh, nearly six or six and a half years ago, I detested fussy cutting. Um, my upline, I used to go to classes with her and we just avoided, oh, well I just <laughs> avoided it, I didn't like fussy cutting. But um, I don't mind it now. I quite like fussy cutting. It's quite therapeutic and relaxing. So we'll put that one there. And we'll put this little one at the top. And the more you do it, the better you get. I know some of the girls at my workshops and classes, um, I avoid giving them fussy cutting um, because I know they. some of them just can't do it at all. They get quite messy but um, you can't avoid it forever <laughs> I may have to cut I'll see how we go I might just cut that little bit off that corner because it's sticking out a little bit too far it won't matter that it's it still looks good actually to even it up I'll cut off this side as well I wasn't sure if it was going to be too wide, but after fussy cutting them, I didn't want to just not use them. That wasn't very smart. But 
still looks quite nice and then this one will be over this side and I think I can tilt this one enough to get it on without cutting it once you've watched if you've watched when you've watched my video um, love to hear your comments I had a few comments I've done this is my fourth one now and um, had a couple of nice comments on my others and if you join the, the groups that I mentioned earlier um, you'll be notified all the instructions will be on there how to um, assemble and your measurements for these cards will be on there I'm just going to trim Oh, I could move that in a little bit and that one without cutting them they're quite flexible I'll just cut that tiny bit off there and then this other little one just to fill up the top this just ties it all in with the DSP that's on there there's some really pretty patterns. This pattern here at the back is um, the same DSP. It's just the reverse. <coughs> One of the reverse sides. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that's the smaller patterns. They're a little bit harder to fussy cut, so I didn't worry about them. But that's the back side of that. But they did. They do look nice on a as a solid piece. So that's that one on that side. Now we can put those in. A little bit of stuff there. I love doing fancy folds and 3D cards. Um, that's my favourite. Or decorating a standard card with lots of different ideas. Um, I do have workshops once a month. If you do live in Brisbane, um, you're welcome to come along. I live on the south side of Brisbane. It's called Heritage Park. And um, yes, if you're interested in coming along, I have workshops on the first Sunday of every month. I think I've made those mats a little bit bigger, but that's fine. They still fit in there. And I do have a... They're, they're split up into two workshops. I used to only have one on the first Sunday of the month, but... Um, it got a bit big, so I split them. There's some ladies that preferred a weekday, ladies that don't work or can flex off from work um, or are on holidays, and they can come on the Wednesday, the, the second part of my workshops on a Wednesday, and it's the first Wednesday of the month. So if the first Wednesday falls before the Sunday, then that one comes first, and um, we go from there. We do the same cards at each, so if you come to one, you you wouldn't come to the other because we, you're doing the same cards again. So that's that there. Then we've got our front and back pieces. This is the front. And I've got this mat around. I thought I'd break it up a little bit with the Melon Mambo, which is one of the colours in the DSP. I'll stick the DSP onto this first. Get my silicon mat again. I swear by my silicon mat because I don't like glue all over my workspace while I'm working. I'm usually reasonably careful um, with glue, but see like that where you get a tiny little spot and then it ends up on your card and sticking on your mat. So that's my front and it's lined up with my inside and I've also got a greeting and some ribbon but I'll put that on when we've completed the card. I always do my embellishments last and I don't know if anyone sprays their cards. I do. I have a mixture and it's the shimmer paint they used to sell. They don't sell it anymore but I did stock up when, they, when it got retired. Um, I... Um, I mix the isocol in a spray bottle um, with quite a few drops. I used the champagne mist. I found the frost white was not the right colour for me. And I've got um, 
champagne mist mixed with the icicle and I spray my cards so that's that one it does sit nicely you could and I thought about it except the last video I did I put some ribbon on and it didn't um, sit too well this one eventually I I often get a large block and overnight I just sit the block on it and then it does shut it's just um, because it's a new fold it's not closing and it's got a little bit of bulk in here so then the back section which is right in the middle here we have got another mat with melon mambo that's three and a quarter by five and three quarters and then the white piece I've <clears throat> I've just stamped the stamp you could fussy cut another flower there if you wanted to and that will go on there That's that one eighth inch border all the way around. Didn't use my silicon mat for that, but usually on a big piece, I'm not too bad. It's when you get smaller bits and you tend to make sure this is up the right way, which is correct. Wouldn't be the first time I've put something upside down. Actually, I had a girl at my class the other day. She she put hers, she went, she put her inside bit in, and then she realised the front was in the wrong plot, or the, the mat for the front was going to be in the wrong spot. So we just cut the inside bit off and redid a new base and fixed that. So that's the back, and then all we've got left to do is the greeting. This greeting is from, and I just rave about this set. These charming sentiments, which have dies to fussy cut. It's just like a fussy cut um, around every um, greeting. And I've used this quite a bit since it's come out. Um, wonderful set. So I've just, and I'm going to put it up on dimensionals. And I've got this little bit of um, polished pink, which went with the Melon Mambo. Um, I'm going to put that in behind that, just as that. And I've also got some embellishments to put on. Uh, I'm going to put some snail at the back of this first to attach the ribbon. I always use snail for my ribbon. I find the glue doesn't um, stick it as well. You could use glue dots, but I find this is nice and strong. I do that first and then just twine this. It's sort of, then you don't need two hands to get it where you want it. And I'll just cross that over like so then I'm going to put some embellishments on the back but not embellishments um, dimensionals another thing that I use lots of love my dimensionals and I like things to sit up straight so I tend to use quite a few that will also hold the ribbon in place Sticking your fingers onto it. I should have put a bit more snail. And then we shall put that here on the front. I tend not to. Sometimes I tip my greetings a little bit. But this one I'm going to put straight. And that's that. Then I've got some embellishments and I've chosen um, iridescent pearl basic jewels. These are so, so pretty. You can colour them. I'm going to leave them white uh, or the pearl iridescent colour at the moment. These are so, so pretty. Um, I might get some big ones out. All the big ones. No, I won't. I'll use a lot of little ones. Put that aside. And my pick tool, which I did have before. No, I didn't. This one. Um, I'll use all these little ones because I tend to 
pick out the big ones all the time and then they all get left. I'll put a couple, I might just put them on the flowers, you can see them a bit better. I'll go for about seven. I always put odd numbers and because there's lots of flowers we can use a few. I can put a couple in here because they're only tiny, they're not going to make the card sit up too much. I won't put them down the the blocks. Three, four, five, six, seven. One up in here. We could go a lot more, but we won't. <laughs> Tend to go overboard sometimes. And that is my card. I hope you like that. Um, Paul building block card. And as you can see, it looks like building blocks. You've got nice even spaces when you do those little pencil lines. If you do that first, um, you don't have a problem. And just make sure that you're where you join down here in the centre, that um, they're not sitting on the score line. Otherwise, it's going to buckle up. But that folds up. You could put... Um, that's what I was going to do, and I completely forgot. Um, a little belly band around that um, would look nice to hold it together. I should have done that before we started, but not to worry. That's the card for today. That's my other one that was retired quite a while ago, but it's on the same, same lines as that. And thank you for watching. Um, I think that's all I had to do. Um, don't forget to share my video if um, if you've got people that are um, crafty minded like we are. Um, please feel free to share it and I will have another fun fold card to show you again the following week. Um, I'll do one every week. I started out doing just normal size cards, normal base cards um, with lots of decoration and then Last week and this week I've gone to fun folds and I've got lots of different fun folds to do. So keep watching and I'd love to hear your comments. Um, stay safe everyone and bye for now. Thank you.